What we have here today, ladies and gentlemen, is a video unlike anything you'll ever see on YouTube. An airing of grievances of sort. No one in the history of YouTube has talked about the MCU in a negative manner, has complained at all about it. This is truly the first of its kind. Some people say I might be an explorer, a pioneer of sorts for going in uncharted territory. A hero? People are saying it, not me. I wouldn't say that, but uh, I won't discredit their thoughts either. So here is a rant about the MCU, the state of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No one, no one has done this before in the history of YouTube. Let's begin. Sarcasm aside in the intro, I do like to think of myself as a unique voice on YouTube. And if you like that, if you like people that are honest, but have a little bit of fun in life, don't think things are so serious all the time, give me a subscription. Give me a subscribe. Come on over. It's nice here. We're having a good time. It's light. It's loose. It's fun. It's fluffy. It's not Marvel. Well, it is Marvel. That, that's what they are. Let's talk about it. I went ahead and did you the flavor of bringing up the different phases of the MCU. And I was honestly quite shocked by how many movies I enjoyed out of those phases. Because lately I find myself hating or at least being annoyed by the new movies that come out and TV shows. But it wasn't that long ago when things were pretty damn good. When Kevin Feige was looked at as a name you could trust. Something you would slap on a lunchbox and kids would buy it. Now though when I see the name, I shudder. I think, what did you do this time, you son of a bitch? How far did you derail this train? That was poor timing. I'm gonna present to you six movies that came out in phase one. Tell me how this makes you feel. Iron Man. Many would consider it the pinnacle right out of the gates. Brilliant storytelling. A great, compelling hero. Not really a hero. Not yet. He's a billionaire playboy philanthropist. His words, not mine, but I agree with him. And that's okay for many people, but some look at him and say, yeah, you're kind of garbage. But he will change over the course of this movie. He will find value in other things. And that's a guy you can root for. That's a guy you can get behind. Someone that's willing to grow right alongside with their tech. And man, does Tony Stark grow as a character over the course of the next several films and phases. Then we have The Incredible Hulk. Not my cup of tea, but when I look back on it now, I still don't like it. But I think, man, they did some things better than they're doing today. Mainly, not everything looks completely fake. Then we go into Iron Man 2, which is essentially an advertisement for the Avengers film. It introduces Black Widow, it's got too many bad guys, Nick Fury's there, eating donuts, talking shop. But underneath all the noise, we still have a compelling character who's got a piece of machinery stuck to him, an arc reactor, that's killing him. So the thing that's keeping him alive? It's also taking his life. It's an interesting dilemma, one that could have had more focus put into it, but we had to push the Avengers film. And that brings us into Captain America. It's a different movie. It's got a different tone. I've grown fond of this one over time, and that's mainly because Chris Evans has become such a cool character in the MCU. I mean, I think he's done now, but he was a great Captain America. And so you go back and watch that original. It's quaint. It's a little bit different than the rest of them. It has this pulpy, old school feel to it. And I appreciate them taking some chances early on. We have Thor in this. It's a competent movie. I wouldn't say it's great. It's good though, in my opinion. And it gave us fantastic new characters. Not only Thor, but also Odin and mainly Loki. The villain turned anti-hero turned hero of the MCU. I mean... He is one of the greatest characters in this entire franchise. And it all started at Thor. Then we hit him with the big guns, the Avengers. We bring it together, the culmination of the previous five movies at its head. We introduce Hawkeye. We have more story for Black Widow. It's a damn good movie. It's a roller coaster. Sure, it's a little Transformers-esque. You got your standard final big battle at the end. Shit's flying around everywhere. But the way Whedon shot it, it looked practical. You know, you had sets mixed in with the CG. Characters felt like they were really there. At those cities, fighting for their lives, saving other people. You contrast that with what's going on today, and it's, it's black and white. But we'll get there. We'll get there. So a solid start for phase one. 
basically lifted by Iron Man. And Iron Man alone carries this thing to phase two, which I have to say, looking at the list, it's a damn good phase, baby. Iron Man 3 kicks things off. A lot of people don't like this one. I'm a big fan. I like that it brought it back to Tony Stark, put all the focus on him. They didn't like the Mandalorian hoodwink. I get it. I understand. It sucks when they do that with uh, comic book favorites or things that you love growing up. I myself really like this Shane Black film. It had that buddy cop road trip vibe with Downey and this boy that they bond with. And I, I just, the, the whole thing was fun. It had some great action. Could have used one more action set piece. But again, there are some heavy stakes. It's inside of a real world with real buildings and cars and people. Not everything's a CG clusterfuck yet. And so I have something I can latch on to and root for. And I know there's some stakes here. Then we have Thor The Dark World. It's lame. It just really is. It's a lame sequel. The first Thor had a good foundation. It didn't do anything amazing by any means. But man, we, we really dropped the ball with the second one. So not a great second showing for the God of Thunder. The God of Lightning, whatever he is. I, let's just keep going. Captain America and the Winter Soldier comes next. And everything after is pretty damn good in my opinion. I know... Many people thought Age of Ultron was lame because they built up a much more sinister, darker character in the trailers than what we got with Ultron. I like that movie. I think it's cool. I think it takes all the stuff from the first Avengers, ratches it up. It's, it's a fun time. You still got those awesome hero shots together. You got some interesting new characters thrown in the mix. I don't really have any complaints about Age of Ultron. It's great seeing the team dynamic unfold here. There's a lot of intimate moments between these characters sitting around trying to lift a hammer, arguing out on a farm for crying out loud, ripping logs in half. They're angry. And I certainly don't want to dismiss Captain America the Winter Soldier. This is one that many people put at the top of their list for good reason. And it's not that hard to see why. This is what I've been saying when it comes to the new MCU. You have to ground some part of the movie or give people something to invest in. When everything is fake and artificial and colorful and silly, wh what are we watching? Why do we care? Winter Soldier's the opposite. It takes things to the streets. It's gritty. They put fucking film grain on this thing. Captain America's beating the crap out of his best buddy who's turned into the super soldier, going around causing havoc. Nick Fury's laid out in a hospital. Black Widow made her hair straight for this one. Man, is she rocking it. Man, is she rocking it. That's another reason why people love this one. Black Widow has the best hairstyle in this film. Hands down. That's an easy win. Plus, we're trying things still in the MCU. We're not sticking to a formula. This time, it's a spy thriller. There's double crossing. We have Hydra in the mix. There's a deep state. There's espionage. There's high stakes. It's global warfare and it's awesome. Phase two goes out on a small note because it's about an ant man. Paul Rudd, the least likely superhero, becomes a very lovable one. It's a small scale film. This time it's a heist style situation, which is fun. Again, Marvel's still playing with the formula, trying new things, shaking things up. It's a good flick. It's not a great flick, but what do you expect? It's got some new characters that we like, that we actually love. I mean, Paul Rudd is one of the most lovable actors out there. Casting him as Ant-Man was just a brilliant move. Kevin Feige, you're, you're still doing things right. Let's see where things go wrong. I just realized the first two phases of the MCU are six and six. We almost doubled that with phase three. There are 11 movies in this phase. Disney and Marvel looked at the fan reaction and mainly their bank account and said, yeah, let's times two this bitch. I don't give a shit if it's a Captain Cold movie. Let's get it out on the big screen. It's Captain Cold, Marvel or DC? I actually don't know. I assume it's Marvel because DC's Mr. Freeze. It would be really silly if they had two ice characters, but it's possible. Phase 2 also contains one of my favorite Marvel movies still to date, and that's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. James Gunn takes a bunch of nobodies, turns them into somebodies. Space Rangers. Hell-bent on being a-holes, but doing it with charm, with wit, and with style. Guardians of the Galaxy sets itself apart from the rest of the MCU by being this contained thing, but also having one of the main villains inside of that container. We got Thanos showing up, sitting on a throne like a boss. 
And he's just teasing. He's just back there doing his own thing. There are people out there that look at Guardians Volume 1 and 2 and say this is actually what killed the MCU. Because they took that playbook and they turned every other one of their properties into Guardians of the Galaxy. Now suddenly everything's way more colorful. Everyone's cracking jokes and being a smartass. It's not James Gunn or Guardians of the Galaxy's fault that Marvel decided to do this. So let's not blame Guardians for that. Just because they were good movies, great movies, it doesn't mean that they should suddenly be, like, shamed for it. That's just nonsense. What we have here is a cavalcade of films ranging from good to downright awesome. I don't think there's a bad movie in this bunch. Captain America's Civil War. Doctor Strange. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I love this movie. I know some people hate it. It's a little too silly. It's a little too out there. Now bring it on. Bring it on. I understand not vibing with Space Pac-Man and a David Hasselhoff reference, but I dare you to convince me that Star-Lord story isn't compelling, or you didn't start to tear up when Yondu died, or that final powerful shot where Rocket looks off at the fireworks. These movies have a depth to them that most the MCU doesn't, and that's why the Guardians of the Galaxy is so special to people. They aren't just boom, explosion, boom, joke. Underneath of there is commentary. Underneath of there is sharp writing. And that's why I'm on board with James Gunn taking over the DCU, because I think the guy really does get it. He gets what makes stories work. And yes, he has juvenile comedy. I happen to enjoy that for the most part. Sure, he says penis jokes, but what's underneath the penis? But what's inside the sack? That's what matters. What's inside the sack is what counts. Spider-Man Homecoming sees the real introduction to Spider-Man. I know he was kind of sloppily thrown into Civil War, which I think is a vastly overrated movie. Good time. It's hard for me to watch that thing. It's, it's too long. But then they knock it out of the park with Thor Ragnarok. And this is another one of those movies where people point at and say, we told you this was a premonition of what's to come with Thor Love and Thunder. You liked Ragnarok. They listened and they magnified it. That doesn't discredit Thor Ragnarok. That discredits the choices made by the director and writer of Thor Love and Thunder. It's not our fault we liked a movie that had a really good balance of comedy, action, and drama. It's the fault of them for magnifying one thing over the other. They went too far with the comedy and they downplayed the drama and that's how it happens. That's how these things fail. Love it or hate it, Black Panther was massive. It built up an entirely new world within ours, with Wakanda. It set up a brand new culture of people that were on the big screen. We rarely ever see an all-black cast like this. Usually they're slaves. Usually it's a suffrage story. It's sadly incredibly rare when you see an all-black cast kicking ass with high-tech equipment in a superhero fantasy film. In fact, this is the first. People will point out Blade. Yeah, of course, Blade's awesome. Wesley Snipes, he's a powerhouse, he's a beast. But that's Wesley Snipes. That's one guy, that's one black dude in a, in a movie full of white people. So this really was culturally significant. And Hollywood marketed the shit out of it. People got annoyed by it the same way they get annoyed when they do a, the strong female lead nonsense, where it's like the first female superhero ever. Everybody should worship her and, and go out and see this film or you're sexist or you're racist or whatever. That's all noise. There's always going to be loud mouse on the internet that have to project their own sad, pathetic lives onto others. As it stands, Black Panther, I thought was good. thought it was good. I didn't think it was great. Um, the, the final act is a disaster. Clearly rushed CG. This is something that's going to be more prevalent going forward as well. This rushed CG nonsense where they're overtaxing the visual designers and creators. It's brutal. I, I've heard horror stories about this going on. And you see it. You see it in She-Hulk. You see it in the newer stuff where it doesn't look good. It looks rushed and half-assed. Black Panther leads into Avengers Infinity War. Not perfectly, mind you. It was a little weird that we had Black Panther and then Infinity War goes right back to Wakanda for a battle scene. We just had a battle there. It would have been perfect if there was a couple movies in between these two. So you really feel that homecoming when you're back at Wakanda again. Instead, it's just awkward. Like, yeah, we, we just saw this! Except for there was CG rhinos last time. All I know is Infinity War, that's still my favorite MCU movie. This thing is a freaking powerhouse and it nails everything to a T. The stakes are freaking high. People are dying. 
You for once see the panic in people's eyes as civilians are running around in the streets. There's a shot early on where Robert Downey, Iron Man, opens the door, T-Money, Stark is going around on the sidewalks. There's people collapsing. He's helping others up. There's ash in the air. He genuinely looks scared shitless. And Doctor Strange comes down. He's like, I got this, brah. Doctor Strange has never been cooler. This is like a Doctor Strange movie. He's telling him all the different things that could go wrong, the, the millions of scenarios or whatever. And he's like, one of them, one we get right. <laughs> That's good. Contrast that with today, with the multiverse. There isn't just one. There are many. There are infinite. And that's the problem. When you have such a massive amount of stake. When you go from Infinity War levels of insanity, where there's only one tiny little infinitesimal chance of survival. Where there are millions of opportunities. Oh, he died? That's okay. We have another one right here. Professor X is dead? That's okay. He was a variant. We haven't seen him before. Here's another one. How am I supposed to feel bad for that? How am I supposed to feel anything? But Infinity War, you get it all. All these characters coming together, it culminates to a head against this villain, Thanos. Josh Brolin is a beast in this. This guy is freaking powerful here. I love this movie from front to back. I remember seeing it in theaters with my kids. My jaw was down. I'm like, did they just end this movie killing these people? Did he just snap out half of existence and that's how they're ending it? With him going out on his ranch? Soaking in the sun? Cheryl Crow style? Holy crap, they did it. They did something new. It was so good. That's the experience. That's one of those moments it's hard to replicate. And as a movie fan, you have to love that. You got to appreciate that when it comes. And with Marvel, that's, that's few and far between now. We then scale way back. <laughs> we go from that to Ant-Man and the Wasp, which in hindsight was actually very smart. Uh, you, you take things that are so massive, there, there's no way to go bigger than that. So you scale back, you scale down, you say, here's a, here's a lighter one. This is a palate cleanser. Yes, it's confusing for moviegoers that aren't familiar with the entire lineage and the, the structure of all these movies and where they fit within this puzzle box that is the cinematic universe. But for us that have been following along, we're like, okay, this takes place before Infinity War and it's ending at the snap. That's cool. That's really cool. That's probably the last time that an end credit scene was good for Marvel, to my knowledge. And then we hit Captain Marvel. This is where things really start to fall apart. This is where the car loses control and is heading for a cliff. We introduce Carol Danvers, Brie Larson, fine. Good choice, good actress, good looking. It, it, it fits, right? We have all these pretty faces, throw another one into the mix. She's Superman, she's female Superman. All right, here's a problem. What's she been doing this whole time? She's supposedly the strongest Avenger of all of them, maybe stronger than Thor, I don't actually know. Um, she seems impenetrable. She seems invulnerable to anything. She flies through ships. She doesn't appear to have a kryptonite. I don't actually think you can hurt her. So we, we've taken the stakes now and we've thrown them out the window. Now I'm left with a, a character who has no personality because in the story, she isn't supposed to have a personality. She has hidden it. That's a problem when I'm trying to connect to a character. And it isn't until the final moments that it's revealed. Oh, she's not really a Cree. She's not really a girl. Not yet a woman, Britney Spears. She's something else. But we don't see that something else. And then the movie's over with her flying away. And um, she's going to return in Endgame. I don't want her to return in Endgame. This is, the Wakanda, this is the Black Panther problem. We introduced Wakanda. Now we're in Infinity War and we're back at Wakanda again. You got to let things breathe. Oh, we just conveniently introduce a superwoman that can destroy everything, has no vulnerabilities. That's kind of convenient going into this final arc of the Thanos storyline. And of course, there she is in Endgame, smashing through chips right on time because she was done fighting volcanoes or whatever the shit she was doing. And then she just leaves again. She's like, gotta go. What stakes could possibly be higher, by the way, that she had to go fly away? 
again. I, I just don't understand. And the convenience of her finding Tony Stark adrift out in space, the vastness of space, what is her ability? Who can do the math on this, by the way, of her being at the right place at the right time to pick up Tony Stark, who's just wandering off into space in a ship, half dead? It's ridiculous. We are already entering into the situation where, okay, we can jump through time now. We're, we're, we have a problem on our hands, folks. I know people love Endgame. I'm not near as high on the hog as they are when it comes to Endgame. I think that it is a fun ending to the franchise, but it's very messy. And they conclude arcs off camera, and I hate that. You cannot conclude the Incredible Hulk's arc off camera. I'm sorry. You set it up. In Infinity War, brilliantly. He's scared of Thanos. He doesn't want to come out and fight him. I can't wait to see how this ends. Well, we don't get to see. It already ended. He's now a completely different Hulk. That's just shit writing. I'm sorry. Oh, we're going to make Thor's depression into comedy. Isn't that fun? That's going to be a trend going forward. Hope you like laughing at sad people. That's what we do now. Captain Marvel and Endgame are bad signs of what's to come. Will there still be good films by Marvel? Yeah, of course. Will there still be great films? Well, that's... That's debatable. This leads us into the final film of the massive Phase 3, and that's Spider-Man Far From Home. This is far from a great movie. Good movie? Eh, I guess. I, I, Tom Holland's good as Spider-Man. I like Tom Holland. He's likable. There's some good cast members here. Not a big fan of the road trip idea. Less a fan of the uh, Downey Jr. leaving him these glasses that basically give him the ability to call airstrikes. He's a teenager. I don't think he's earned that. I don't think he's earned that responsibility based on his track record. It's just a sign of the kitty crab going on in these scripts where the heroes are reckless at this point. They make terrible decisions that end up affecting people in really bad ways. Blowing up buildings, bringing bad guys from a different realm into theirs. Far From Home is a very mediocre film. It has one really amazing scene towards the end where Mysterio's throwing all these visions at Spider-Man. Incredible CG work there. The whole thing was animated. At times, it looks lifelike as hell. So kudos to the last good VFX department working on this movie because going forward, it's going to get real ugly real fast. Let's jump into Phase 4. If you thought 11 feature-length films were a lot, wait till you see what Phase 4 has to offer. We're up to 17, folks. Not all movies, in fact, a good chunk of them are Disney Plus TV series exclusives, and they're pretty mid at best. We start things out with WandaVision, which I think is one of the strongest of the stories so far, because again, it's trying new things. We're not in this formulaic route, we're doing something new with this TV episodic idea. It's brilliant. It's a TV show playing off tropes of TV shows. I don't think it fully sticks the landing, but the final shot, the final act does leave us wanting more for another season. Or maybe it'll lead into a movie in a really sloppy way. That's exactly what happens. I'll say the same thing for Falcon and the Winter Soldier and pretty much every single one of these shows going forward. They start out with promise, but by the time the third or fourth episode kicks in, I realize these might have been movies at one point that they repurposed as TV shows because they feel so freaking padded out. Oftentimes, with TV shows, you have a beginning, middle, and end on each episode. And then you have the overarching themes or storyline. X-Files had the Monster of the Week episodes, but then they had the government shenanigans, the alien episodes, the projects that would span the entire season. Or series. With Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it felt like one extended movie. So episode to episode, there really wasn't anything interesting going on. It was just them jumping to different cities and locations. And by the end, I was just burnt out. Loki, kind of the same thing, had a little bit of an episodic nature, but for the most part, it was just Loki kind of confused all the time, not having his powers, which is very uninteresting, and having him getting his ass kicked constantly. Thankfully, the dynamic between him and Owen Wilson was so good that it, that it has me hang on until the end. What If would be the first of a few shows on Disney Plus that I would try and then walk away from because I get what they're doing and I don't have any interest. I didn't really like the art style, the cell shading animate crap wasn't very good. It seemed low budget, half-assed. Sometimes it looked kind of cool, but for the most part, it was like, eh, did, can we not put any more resources into this? Like, why do it if you're not going to do it right? Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, I will admit, I was very nice about. 
I saw it. I think I was so disappointed with the shows that I was willing to just be a little bit extra generous to this one. I watched it a second time and it definitely wasn't near as exciting. I did enjoy the lead character. I like that Aquafina didn't annoy the shit out of me like she usually does. And I really was a big fan of the martial arts being thrown in. It's nice to see some choreography again for once. That bus sequence is one of my favorite fights in all of the MCU. I think though that these movies feel like they have to be longer than they should be. If this film was an hour and 45 minutes long, which is akin to the first John Wick movie, that's much more palatable for me. We're pushing over two hours with a lot of them. They all feel like they have to be this grandiose end games again. They don't. Just give us some interesting storyline, some fun characters, and call it a day. Okay, I've seen most of the Jackie Chan filmography. None of them overstay their welcome. They all have terrible scripts. They all have really bad acting, but the freaking action's great. I know I'm going to get at least three. A beginning, middle, and end fight scene. That's all I'm there for. We don't always have to go for broke when it comes to these epic, massive scale films. Sometimes just give us simpler storylines with some great action and some cool characters. They had that, they just, they just blew their load too much. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Black Widow was probably the most generous movie review I've ever done in my life. I've praised it way too much. I don't hate it. I actually quite enjoy Black Widow. It has some very bad effects later on. De definitely very inconsistent. But overall, I like what they did with the character. I love the inclusion of the sister. The family dynamic worked. And in fact, when I look at Ant-Man and the Wasp and then compare it with Black Widow, Black Widow looks far better in comparison. On its own, it's a solid flick. Should I have rated it as high as I did in the MCU? No, but I think MCU rating lists are stupid. I think ranking lists in general are stupid. Fun to do, fun to talk about the movies, but often I look back and I think, eh, I probably put that too high. I probably could have put that lower on the list. Who cares though? At the end of the day, my opinion hasn't changed. Black Widow was fine. I had a good time with it. I like that it was more along the lines of that Civil War Winter Soldier vibe, grittier. Yeah, it gets zany towards the end. It gets a little out there, but I like that scene where she's flying through the air, jumping off of shit as it's breaking. That was pretty cool. Then there's Eternals. <laughs> That's hot trash. I really, I, I don't even want to think about that movie. It's such a disaster. It feels so disjointed from everything else. Visually, it looks more like the DCU. Characters feel more like the DCU. They're all emo. They're all, they're all angry. They're all sad and depressed. The color is completely washed away. None of that stuff actually bothers me. I, I'm, I'm saying it like it's a negative. That stuff's all okay. But the fact that they're trying to be part of the MCU is the problem. Um, that's when things don't make any sense. Like, where is everyone else? Why is there a giant hand coming out of the earth? How is that not affecting anything? Why do I have so many people here that I'm following? I have no time to really get to know any of them. And their powers are so advanced, the bullshit excuses they come up with to have these people not around is laughable. It really shouldn't be part of the MCU, that's my biggest criticism. And as it stands, it doesn't feel like it is. Hawkeye, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, three more series that I did not finish. I started all of them pretty, pretty positively each time. I liked all the lead characters. They don't feel like shows. They feel like cut up movies that are padded beyond all existence. I'm not wasting my time with them. And the fact that Moon Knight has pretty visuals at one point, but then at the next looks like complete shit, doesn't help anything. And that's across the board. These shows don't have the budget to justify the story they're trying to tell. It comes off as CW. It comes off as low tier superhero stuff. And these characters probably deserve a lot better. If I read the comics, I would, I would be able to give a, a definitive answer. They deserve better than what this is. Lest I forget about the most overrated movie in the MCU, which is Spider-Man No Way Home. I know, I know. It's got all the Spider-Men in it. So therefore amazing, right? No, it has such a childishly stupid plot. It is so hard for me to say, oh yeah, what an amazing film. What it does right is the final act where they're all together, quipping, having some fun, sharing their stories, their trauma, connecting on a personal level. That stuff was really good. The full story is bad. The individual moments are what make this movie shine. Is it a great movie? I, I don't think I would say that. I think it's a good movie. It's a watchable film. 
Again, far too long. Way too long. Still fantastic to see, but at the end of the day, this is a plot revolving around a kid whose friends couldn't get into the college they wanted, so he has his best friend, Magical Avenger, do some shit to screw up the entire timeline, opening up the universe for other variants to come in. This is... This is the stakes here. This is the plot. Where Thor Ragnarok did a lot of things great for our character, Thor Love and Thunder did a lot of things wrong for our character. A colorful Looney Tunes mess of a movie focusing on really lame jokes, terribly outdated sheep yelling memes, and a villain who feels entirely out of place in this wackadoo universe. Somewhere in this mess of poor CG and ugly green screen, there is a story that could have been told revolving around Jane Foster and her struggle with cancer and how Thor made this emotionally impactful decision to let his hammer bring her back to life. That is a montage. That is a small 20 second section inside of this dumbass movie which features a scene of an overweight Zeus flipping around lightning bolts like he's putting on a performance at Cirque du Soleil. Massively disappointing movie. She-Hulk Attorney at Law, and I'll probably get a bunch of crap for this, is one of the better MCU TV shows that have been offered. And no, not because it's good, but because it's watchable. It's watchable trash. It's like 18 minutes long with seven minutes of credits. It doesn't take itself serious at all. I have no idea where it fits into the MCU, if at all, or if it's just this kind of Deadpool side thing that has no bearing on the stakes in the real MCU universe. If it does, and we have plot points taking place, like Hulk having a kid, and that was just, that's established in this, and that's that, wow, uh, horrible. Absolutely horrible. But if it really is just its own thing, if it's its own David Pumpkins event over here, kind of making fun of the overall MCU, fine. That's, that's whatever, you know? The effects are atrocious, but it is a TV show and it's not meant to be taken serious. So I forgive that. When you have something more akin to Naked Gun than you do say The Winter Soldier, I really can't fault it too much. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was the sequel to Doctor Strange, but kind of more a sequel to WandaVision, as Wanda is the main focus of this, with Doctor Strange kind of being the secondary character. It sucks, because Strange has always been really cool. He's had a lot of style, a lot of charisma, a lot of class. And having Sam Raimi here, I thought for sure we were going to get a lot of style. We were going to get a lot of Raimi action. The movie felt really disjointed. It felt like there was a lot of interference with Marvel on this one. And everything just felt really cut up. Again, it was hard to really connect to these characters. Major issue with that film. Major issue with everything in Phase 4, pretty much. And that goes doubly for the next movie that came out, which was Wakanda Forever, a.k.a. Black Panther 2. No Chadwick Boseman. Movie starts out with a funeral. We're moving past him right away. We got to get it out. We got to get on with the show. But really, they didn't. The whole movie is mourning. The whole movie is the loss and where to go next. And that's okay. You know, it's good to honor Chadwick. It's good to honor that character, even though he was very new to the franchise, only showing up a couple times here and there. Again, the storyline is so childish, so simplistic. They throw in Iron Girl, who for some reason is building this amazing technology out of a garage that I guess she has access to, with all this amazing tech at her disposal. She is the linchpin of this story, and it just made no sense at all. I, I go over it in my review, I really don't want to dwell on it, it just didn't work for me at all. The first Black Panther was different, it had style. This one just feels like it's a shell of its former self. Which is to be expected when your lead superhero is nowhere to be found. I don't know about you, but I don't want to watch a Superman movie where Superman's not in the film. We end out the TV show side with these two special presentations. Now, these are where I think Marvel should focus when it comes to the Disney Plus crap. Get rid of those six to nine episode shenanigans. They just don't work. These mini movies, however, I really enjoyed them. Werewolf by Night... Could have been better, for sure, but it did have an identity. It did go for broke when it went with the black and white, the monster style of universe that it lives in. It had its own story to tell. It didn't pretend to be part of some grandiose thing. It was smaller scale. It was simple. It got in and out. 
Wasn't amazing by any means, but visually, solid. Cool new characters, that's all I really needed. Guardians of the Galaxy is always good. You feel like you have personal investment with these guys, and when something happens to them or when they're in harm's way, it's scary. You're concerned. When they're just sitting around, telling stories, cracking jokes, you feel like you're one of them. You're a friend along for the ride. Doing a Christmas special with these characters makes sense. Doing a Halloween special with these characters fits. Pretty much anything with these characters in my book is a-okay. As long as you have James Gunn in the kitchen on this, mixing up his spices, stirring them around. If you're Marvel, I say let him cook. Last and kind of least is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This just showed me, finally, that yep, we have officially gone from Disney Plus the show to Disney Plus the movie. This easily could have been on Disney Plus. The budget reeks of green screen, low budget effort. Sure, there's tons of spectacle from the VFX team, but it's background noise. It's just peppered visuals. There's no layer to any of it. There's no dimension, which is ironic because visually there's no dimension and the story has none. Now that I've gone over all this Marvel crap, you can definitely see the trajectory. You can see where it started from, how it started to peak in the middle, and then how they started biting off more than they could chew. They did a pretty good job with the amount of movies getting pushed out in Phase 3, but man, Phase 4, they definitely took on way too much. It started to tank when Captain Marvel came out, Endgame continued the trend, but it had such massive buildup behind it thanks to Infinity War and the prior films that there was no way people were going to go into that and be disappointed. You had so many good characters thrown in and a great action set piece. That's really all we needed. They only had to stick the landing for that final fight and the death of Tony and they got it right. Everything else, whatever, right? There's a lot of filler, there's a lot of placeholder stuff, but when it all boils down to it, it was a great ending to Tony Stark and to Captain America. Not so much Thor or Hulk, but they got half of it right. <laughs> and that's pretty good for a conclusion. And I say conclusion because everything since Endgame really seems lesser than, doesn't it? And I don't mean lesser than Endgame, I mean lesser than Phase 2 and Phase 1 and Phase 3, all of them. They have low points, but the highs are way better, I think, than what Marvel's producing now, especially as of late. Once these shows started to kick in, the creativity seems bankrupt. Everything seems conveyor belts now. Everything seems merchandise, toy lined, get in, get out, work these VFX teams to the bone because we don't want to build practical sets. We don't want to really have to rent out locations to film and stop traffic in Chicago, New York, or actually have to write compelling stories. Instead, green screen the crap out of it. They're in the quantum realm now. So we can just film on a lot for a few months. We can voice act our way through most of this. We can CGI entire people and then just talk over the top of them. So I think a lot of people are like me, we're just sick of it. We're sick of treating audience members like idiots. They're comic book movies, right? So they can be dumb. No, I disagree. I disagree, any medium can be smart, at least smarter than what I've been seeing lately. You have to do better. And when you're putting in two to $400 million on some of these things, where's that money going? And why are you spending that much on an Ant-Man movie? <laughs> Look at some of the greatest ones ever. Logan, The Dark Knight. It's not about the budget. It's about the script. Marvel needs to hire better. They need to work better. These shoot first, fix it, and post movies are not flying for me anymore. I want to hear from you. This was a very long video. Maybe the longest video I've ever produced, to be honest with you. Let me know in the comments if you made it through. Like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe to the video if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews, rants, reactions, things of that nature every week. Would love to have you stick around. Again, this is the unique stuff you're getting here. A, a video on how Marvel is suffering lately and not putting out the quality content. No one's ever even conceived of doing something like this. Sarcasm again. I, I do that as well. Take care.